So example three on seven three uh, on seven point three, the uh, power functions and function operations. We're talking about the composition when we last left off, and when we said the composition um, f of g of x, what we said was you take g of x, whatever that is, and in this case it is two x minus one. You take the whole item and you plug it in for the x of the first item. So that's what we did. G of x, which was two x minus one, I plugged it in for x right here. That's all I did. So notice how the x I took out and I plugged the whole entire item in there. Well, because it's to the negative 1 and we can't have negative exponents, all of this goes to the denominator because all of that is to the negative 1 power. So I move all that down so your official answer is 3 over 2x minus 1. We can also do this backwards. I can plug in f into uh, g. So when I do that, when we do that here, uh, I take f, I plug that in, all of that into everywhere there's an x, which is right here. 3 times 2 is 6, and negative 1 is what we have here. So since it's a negative, I can't have a negative exponent, so that means I have to move that into the denominator, but not the 6. Only the negative 1 moves down below, the x to the negative 1 moves down below, so I really end up with 6 over x minus 1 as my answer there for example 3. Um, we continue on here. Um, we have the same two f of x and g of x. Now I'm saying well if you have f of f of x, well what that means is I take this whole thing and I plug it in for the x. So here is the whole item of f and I plug it into the x of f. So that's what I did. So I have to take that negative and distribute it through. Negative, so it's 3 to the negative 1 and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Okay, well no problem. Well, what I want you to keep in mind is this is 3 to the first power and this is 3 to the negative 1. Well since the bases are the same all I have to do is add the exponents. So 1 plus negative 1 is 0 and anything to the 0 power is 1 so really all I have left is an x. Um, to sit here and find the domains um, we already did all the work here for uh, f of g of x, right? We did that already. Um, here it is. And we solved it to figure out that we ended up getting, um, where was that on the last page? When we solved that, we ended up getting uh, this right here. Okay. And the reason I'm taking a step back here is when we find domains, you're finding out what x can't be. That's basically what I'm asking you. What can't x be? Well, think about it in terms of fractions. x is not allowed to be. Um, in the denominator if it's going to be zero. We can't have a zero on the bottom. If you have a zero on the bottom of a fraction in the denominator, it's undefined. So when you see a fraction and I ask you to find the domain, your main idea is to make sure that we do not get a uh, zero on the bottom uh, in the denominator. So when we're doing this, um, I need to remember that the 2x minus 1 came on the bottom, right? We just saw that. 2x minus 1 was in the bottom. So 2x minus 1 cannot equal 0 is basically what I'm telling you. 2x minus 1 can't be 0 because if the bottom is 0, it's undefined. And if the denominator is undefined, then we don't get an answer. So we solve this um, by setting it equal to 0, or not equal to 0, I should say. We get 2x does not equal 1, and I divide both sides by 2, so I get x does not equal 1 half. What that means is for this, for f of g of x, this function right here, this new function that we created, x, I can plug anything I want to in for x. Anything in the world I can plug in except for 1 half. If I plug a 1 half in there, it will not work. So anything in the world can be the domain. I can plug in anything for x except for 1 half. For g of f of x, when we did that one, we ended up getting this. Well, I just told you, right? Fractions, the denominator can't be 0. So this one's actually pretty simple. You would just set the whole bottom of the fraction to not equal 0. Well, there's no math here to solve. x cannot equal 0. So the point is, the domain for this is x can be anything in the world. You can plug in anything you want for x to make this function work, except for 0. Because if you put a 0 in there, it's undefined. And f of f of x, when we were doing that, we end up with just x. Is there a fraction there? No. There's nothing there. Since there's no fraction there, all, right, all I'm concerned with is what x can't be right now. And 
I can plug anything I want to in there and get an answer that'll work. So in this circumstance, it's all real numbers, meaning any number in the entire world that I want to plug in that's real, I can plug it in and it'll work for that one. So taking a look here quick at example 5, a clothing store advertises that it has 25% off sale. For only one day, the store advertises an additional savings of 10%, so we're going to use composition to find the total discount. So the first one says that you have an item, right? And it says it's 25% off, so I'm taking 25% off of it. So 100% of the item minus 25% of the item is 75% of that item. If you have an original item and you take 10% off of it, so 100% minus 0 0.10, which is 10%, I end up with 90% of the item. And the reason I'm doing this is the X is the original amount, and this is the price that we're taking off. So the reason why we're doing composition is when you walk into the store, it's 75% off the original price, but then they're giving you an additional 10% off. So what that's really saying is, it's saying you take the second discounted item, which is this 90%, and you plug it in for x. So it's 0.75 times 0.90x, and when you multiply it together, you get 0.675x. So how um, or what would a $40 sweater be that day? Well, I just take 40 and plug it in there, and when I do, I end up with $27. So here's your homework. If you have any questions on 7.3, please feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, um, have fun with it, and we shall speak later.